a problem. Uh, please excuse me because I have a commodity to overestimate the time. So for the sake of all of us, let me read. I will try to do it as much uh, um, communicative as it could be. So, I would like to expand a little bit the presentation of uh, Akos uh, about the Kakoch Turian, uh, which he was talking about just a minute ago. And this presentation will focus on the intra-site uh, geoarchaeological investigations, both in terms of the GIS, so the laboratory-based, and the non-invasive methodology like the geophysics, as well as the sedimentological and geochemical analysis of a one housing structures which was excavated. Well, first of all, uh, we have to do all of the duties. So uh, this is a bigger project, uh, archaeological project of Kakuch Turian investigations, entitled Open Societies and Closed Space. Here we have a full title. And it was financed by the National Science Center in Poland. And it's a collaboration between the Adam Mickiewicz University, the Christian Albrecht University, Hungarian Academy of Science, and St. Istvan University. And the aim of this particular project is um, to reveal the specificity of the fortified settlement occurrence, uh, their development and character during the Middle Bronze Age in Hungary, and more generally in the Carpathian Basin. And the project consists of interdisciplinary methodology from which one is the combination of the non-invasive methods with the archaeological excavations and geoarchaeological analysis. And the main study area is the, of course, the title Kakuch Turian Settlement, which was introduced earlier very well by uh, Akos. As it was already mentioned, the base ground from which all of the activities uh, started onwards was the magnetometric prospection used by the uh, sensitive magnetometer, multi-sensored, uh, and a total area of 11 hectares was surveyed. Uh, from the aerial photography, we can see uh, the two partitioned uh, settlements, uh, like in here, uh, and on the magnetometric, while the magnetometric plan showed the more, very more complex uh, picture of the site, which is divided into three parts, the northern, uh, western, and the, the eastern or southeastern, let's say. Uh, from the point of acquiring uh, the magnetic plan, all of the further activities started. And the archaeological aims of this part of the project was to reveal the internal structure of the site and its functions, uh, to verify the magnetometry plan and establish the chronology of the site as well as its particular parts, because we have um, a three partitioned site. The geoarchaeology, however, focused mostly on supporting the archaeological questions. However, they also consisted, as we can saw from the Akos presentation, for the power environmental reconstruction and recognition of the site context. And the aforementioned questions were approached using the GIS analysis of the magnetometry imagery, the corings and the drillings, and also excavations combined with the laboratory analysis of samples obtained during the earthworks. So, how do we interpret the uh, magnetic picture? Because we can see it is divided into three parts, but what is inside it? First of all, to distinguish particular anomalies, as well as their types and groups, we use different spectra of value ranges in order to obtain as much detail as it is possible. Therefore, we use the maximum minimum value range for detecting significant anomalies. This is the upper, uh, the, yeah, the upper picture. Uh, plus 10 to minus 10, the middle, in order to search for major archaeological objects. And finally, plus 1 to minus 1 uh, to search for a very slight differences in the background. By doing that, we were able to distinguish three main types of anomalies, uh, which were the ditch-like ditch -like structures, uh, the well-like structures, and the point of this presentation, the house structures located mostly in the uh, western part of this, uh, of this settlement. Uh, in order to detect the housing structures, we have to use the 5 to minus 5 nanotesla range and extract them into separate raster file. Uh, and it appeared that the highest number and the largest concentration of the such objects are placed in the western part of the sediment. And after converting the shape into the shape, shape file sorry, format, we were able to perform further spatial analysis of this picture and construct the line of symmetry of objects characterized by elongated shapes and specified angles, so 90 angles indicating that this, this could be a wall. By that, we have documented at least 16 house-like structures, with two being the most representative in the southern part, and all of them are arranged concentrically around the 
we think that this could be also a distortion, but around the main largest building, which is uh, arranged at the rectangular uh, arrangement. Sorry. And one of these housing structures, uh, to be precise, the one which was the best preserved on the magnetic plan, was subjected to archaeological excavations. From the plan, it measures from around uh, 11 to 15 meters long and 4 meters width. width. Uh, well, it depends if we count this uh, anomaly in here. Uh, and the earthworks, excuse me, yeah. And the earthworks confirmed the domestic character of these structures with walls made from uh, dope, clay, half in the uh, northern corner and suggested entrance into the, in the northwestern part of these uh, housing structures. In the light of excavations, the house appears to measure around 11 on 4 meters, so we are at the same level of the geomagnetic picture, and it covers more or less its magnetic appearance. Moreover, the suspected entrance also has its corresponding gap in the higher magnetic uh, values gap uh, in this part, so this continuity. Uh, and especially useful was the microplanigraphy done during the excavations by geodetical instruments, which helped us to correlate the different features, archaeological features, with the exact anomalies on the magnetic plan. But during the excavations, I won't speak about them, it's a subject for a se separate uh, presentation, so we'll focus only on the geoarchaeological and sedimentological investigations. And during these excavations, on the level of 50 centimeters below the ground level, a series of samples were obtained both from the inner part of the house, so in here, and from the walls, as well as from the exterior, the outside the house area. More than 200 samples were submitted for sedimentological analysis of brain size parameters, their special distribution of the parameters. Moreover, we have conducted the analysis of the geochemical uh, contamination, which comprised the carbonates, the organic matter, zinc, manganese, iron phosphates, and copper. Well, the results. Uh, the grain size parameters and their distribution shed some light about the sedimentary environments within the house as well as in its context. First of all, there are differences in the sorting, the standard deviation, which uh, where we can see the better sorting of the material within the house than on the outside. However, we have to state that the sorting of the material is very poor, both in here and in here. Uh, the high kurtosis, which indicates the uh, pulsative sedimentary environment is also recorded inside the house, but the entire values are more or less similar into the entire picture. Uh, the fractions of mud, so the clays and silts combined, uh, correspond to the house shape, which could be explained by the abundance of fallen dope within the structure. The highest concentration of the structure uh, is located in the northern part of the house, which corresponds to the location of the clay heart, so it should be somewhere around here. I'll it is. This is the uh, uh, half made from dough. Uh, when we look at the distribution of the geochemical uh, results, uh, we think that we might state some functional aspects of the cows and where the human activity could took place. Well, at first, the zinc and the uh, copper content is strikingly higher in the areas outside the house. What is most important is uh, that the places of these concentrations are corresponding with the possible entrance to the hut. The same fact can be recorded while discussing the phosphate distribution uh, within the trench. It seems, therefore, that perhaps, of course, the economic activity took place outside the hut just in front of these doors. The high iron content located along the walls can be explained by the presence of dope which comprise the iron oxides. Uh, the manganese, however, concentrates also in the area in front of the house, but this should be related more or less to the open space environment and more efficient weathering processes. Uh, what appears from this uh, analysis uh, is perhaps the answer to the question where the activity took place. However, we have focused on a rather different aspect of these results, which we combined with, again, the magnetometry plan. So we see that the area outside the house in the magnetic picture, uh, it lacks certain anomalies and is rather neutral, let's say. On the other hand, the sedimentological and geochemical analysis show us a high degree of anthropogenic processes, of anthropopressure. And therefore, we started to think about the possible explanation, which evolved into a concept of pathways. We assumed that the areas inside the western part of the settlement, in here, um, western settlement, enclosed by the ditch with no distinctive anomalies, is also related to human activity. In order to generalize the picture, we have decreased the resolution and averaged the nano-Tesla values within 0.5 to 0.5 raster cells. 
The area still around zero nanotesla after this uh, activity should be therefore uh, should inform us about the places with no significant anomalies, but as it was shown in the excavation and laboratory analysis, still related with human um, activity in prehistory. After merging the cells with similar and specified um, by our assumption values, we have obtained an intriguing picture of some kind of a pathways which could be traced along the settlement. Well, it should be, however, noted that this needs a lot of further studies and we have already planned and did some coring in the probe areas and uh, uh, they span the cells of zero values adjacent to the magnetic anomalies of the house-like structures and the ditch in order to search for uh, the change. And this should show us the grain size distribution, the geochemical structure of the sediment and uh, its structure that creates the areas interpreted as the pathways or better named it, the empty spaces around the settlement, inside the settlement. Uh, to conclude, uh, by using, uh, we think that using the magnetometry, we have obtained a more detailed resolution model of the settlement, and therefore we could preliminarily distinguish different areas of the site. As always, the non-invasive methods should be followed by their verification, and in this example, the main emphasis was put on the excavations of the housing structures and drillings in the entire area of the settlement. Furthermore, uh, the sedimentological and geochemical analysis of the samples from the trench can serve the can provide the functional interpretation of different parts of the house and also its exterior as it appears here. After that, again, we can go out to the larger scale, extrapolating the results, which is the pathway or the empty spaces example concept. So thank you for this presentation. And just to make a short advertisement, uh, there, is, um, uh, there is an advertisement of the book that we will see the daylight very soon. And it will comprise the chapter also concerning all of the geoarchaeological activities in Kaku Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.